you must be wondering what I'm doing in this hall with a kerosene lamp. For a moment, close your eyes and imagine that the year is 1887. You're a wealthy citizen of Manhattan, New York, and this actually is your most used appliance. One fine day comes a young Thomas Edison, and he lights up your place with the newly invented light bulb. Amazing new light, bright, brilliant, beautiful, and brings you unlimited bragging rights. But there is a problem. With the light bulb, he has also installed a coal-fired power plant in your neighborhood, which is noisy and pollutes the place. You see, Thomas Edison's direct current requires that the power source, the generator, be close to the light bulbs, because direct current cannot be transmitted over long distances. So wouldn't you wish that you had the light and the electricity and not the smoke and pollution? This is exactly what happens. Along comes Nikola Tesla with his invention, the transformer, and he is able to, in one stroke, take all the power plants out in the suburbs. Back then, electricity was the new frontier, and big power plants were set up outside of cities. At the same time, electricity as alternating current was transmitted to cities, towns, and industry through a serpentine network of uh, substations, transmission lines, and distribution transformers. The demand for electricity kept growing, and so bigger and bigger power plants were set up, and clean earth actually lost out. What we have left is actually pollution, which is today leading to a climate change crisis. Fast forward to present times. In 2014, I visited a village, Mukhara, about three and a half hours from Mumbai. This old man was sitting outside and he was weaving bamboo baskets for the local vegetable market. This village had no electricity, so come sundown, he would move indoors. So no more weaving, no more baskets, and no more income for him. I'm told that recently, the rural electrification drive in the country reached Mukhara. And so now, the old man has solar panel, battery, and a light bulb. This is very different for him. And so he is actually able to weave inside for as long as he wants. He may not have the bragging rights at the time of Edison, but definitely his 40% increased income and his ability to adapt to new technologies is making him the object of envy of the entire village. The technology he's using is actually the same as what Edison had, except that the coal-fired plant has been replaced with solar panels, which generate clean electricity. However, you and I, who live in urban areas and have a connection from the utility through the pole coming into our homes, even today, use electricity the way Nikola Tesla had visualized it more than 120 years back. And in the meantime, the way we Consume electricity has almost entirely changed. Almost all devices today, consider this, be in offices or our homes, have electronics. And all electronics run on direct current. In our homes and offices, we end up using adapters like these to convert alternating current to direct current. And every time we do this conversion, we lose up to 20% of electricity as heat, heat which we feel whenever we happen to touch those adapters. Further, we are increasingly harnessing solar energy to produce electricity. 
We are also putting batteries in our electrical networks for emergencies, backups, and even powering up our mobile devices. All solar panels inherently generate direct current. All batteries can be charged with direct current, and so obviously they discharge also the same direct current. So the big question is, why not move entirely to direct current? This begins to make sense. You can have solar panels on the roof producing electricity, which can be connected directly, efficiently, and safely to appliances, thereby eliminating the loss of electricity to heat. Further, you become your own electricity producer, like the old man in the village who was controlling his own production and consumption of electricity in his own hands, we can also do that. Let me ask you another question. How many people you believe on Earth today have no electricity at all? Take a guess. Would you believe me if I told you that one out of every seven does not have any electricity? Shockingly, 1.1 billion people on Earth have no electricity at all. Put differently, this is equal to the entire population of North America and Europe put together. These people live in dark homes, but not in dark ages. They are aware of what electricity can mean for their lives, livelihood, and lifestyle. In today's age and times, not providing electricity is like denying the right to be part of the 21st century community. Recognizing this, in 2015, 196 global leaders got together in Paris and committed themselves to 17 sustainable development goals. These goals were meant to ensure development for all, equality for all, and also taking care of the environment. Of these 17 goals, 12 are directly impacted by electricity or the absence of it. And so already goal number seven, which is affordable and clean energy, is becoming the key enabler goal for all the development in the world. So the twin objectives now in front of governments are to provide adequate, affordable electricity and care for the environment. It's no longer an either-or issue that you can do one at the cost of other. They have to deliver on both. And the twin objectives can be effectively delivered by localized production of electricity using solar energy or other renewable sources. This is further driving the demand for direct current solutions. It is well proven through case studies in Africa and India that people can be taken from poverty to a better life simply by providing electricity. This means that, especially in rural areas which are not connected to the grid, having local production of electricity through direct current and having direct current networks locally, this is a quick and efficient way of providing affordable and clean electricity. This fact is now finding universal acceptance, and you will see a paradigm shift in the way we think of electricity in our future. Already in India, there are about 600,000 homes wired with direct current. There are, in Bangladesh, about 5 million solar home systems where government policies are conducive. Direct current networks are coming up through startups and entrepreneurs. Solshare, for example, is a company in Bangladesh which is setting up direct current uh, networks for entire communities. So is uh, Claro in India and Mkopa in uh, Kenya. With all this happening in direct current, let me bring a, a very heartening story of Narutoli to you. Narutoli is a tribal village in Jharkhand, 
which has remained off-grid socially, metaphorically and electrically for the longest time. Recently, a local organization, Amblinda, set up a microgrid in the village for providing lighting for, uh, for, for the people, also electricity for uh, uh, poultry farming and water pumping. Suddenly, the villagers now are becoming entrepreneurial and looking at more ways to harness this new um, asset called uh, electricity. They pay less than five rupees for a day's worth of lighting, which is less than what they would pay for kerosene for the same period. The village GDP has grown by 10.6% since the grid was established. This is better than the national average. Now, does this mean um, end of uh, alternating current? Definitely not, at least not for the next few decades. Today's electrical infrastructure, be it power generation, transmission or distribution, is all wired for alternating current. It's only at the last stage that we end up using these adapters to convert alternating current to direct current. It is not possible to junk the entire alternating current infrastructure and replace with direct current infrastructure overnight. As a result, people will continue to use alternating current and we will have a transition over a period of time from alternating to direct current. You may also be wondering what role I see for myself in this sweeping transition from alternating to direct current. Over the next decade, appropriate standards need to be developed. Standards which enable retrofitting, replacing, or setting up new direct current networks. These standards must essentially deliver on three wins. Win for our planet by making it sustainable. Win for our global growth and development by enabling adequate affordable electricity. And definitely a win for the rural masses who today don't have any electricity. I am quite passionate about helping develop these standards. Governments and all stakeholders can work together to actually harness the transformative power of direct current, which is really the electricity for 21st century for you, for me, and for our fellow citizens in their huts and shanties who even today use this kerosene lamp and actually are waiting for electricity to touch their lives. Thank you. Mm -hmm.